Hello everyone and welcome to One Teacher, One Scientist chat room. Today we have Rupinder Mahindru. Rupinder has been a, a teacher of music, of Indian classical music for 18 years at the prestigious Vellum Girls School in Dehradun. Rupi, as she's popularly known as, has been running a Gurukul for children in Gurgaon and she has also been chairing many organizations involved in Indian classical music. One of the latest ones is, of course, being the national vice chairperson of Spik McKay and heading the Spik McKay initiatives in the Northeast. Thank you so much, Rupi, for being with us today and sharing your insights and experience on the role that music can play in a child's life. You know, I've, I've always believed that a child can express himself in many ways. And music is such an important aspect in a child's development. So your, your insight into how music can actually help in a holistic development of children. So as far as holistic development of a child is concerned, no matter how many years, how many months, how many decades, we can go on and on speaking to educators, speaking to the government, speaking to you know school directors, heads, that it is so important to have music uh, for the holistic development of the child. But uh, they do talk about it. Every single school will advertise it. You know, we are we do holistic education. But when you get down to it, when you look at it, actually, it's all about, you know, their concentration is always on their maths and their science and the education part of it, which is very prominent in the left part of the brain. And uh, the right part where the creativity part of the brain just gets subdued because they do not give it the importance that they need to give it. And you know, most of the girls, the schools out there, they do have teachers, they have music teachers. And uh, I have had about 35 years experience in teaching music. And I have seen, and uh, since I've come to Gurgaon, I'm in touch with students from maybe 20 schools. Very, very few students who are actually able to reproduce anything they've really done in school. And it's all about homework, it's all about their studies. The music really is all about Kehneki Badhe, that you know, we're going to do it, but it doesn't really happen practically speaking. The schools are not doing what they need to do. They are not giving it the priority it needs. They do not have a subject for music which is as important as a math class. They do not do that. And till they do that, the child's creativity is not going to come forward. Yeah. They have programs, so it's fine. You have a you have a uh, you know, uh, an annual program. So you pick out the best and you train them for a few days and then you're telling everybody, see, this is what we do. But that's not safe. That's not safe. You pick yeah. up two people, train them up, put them on stage. And probably those children are learning privately. Yes, that's The education, it's not them who's actually doing the training. So what needs to be done is to introduce music as a subject, as a, have a music curriculum right from nursery onwards yeah and why do we drop it after class five why do we why why is our culture our indian classical music which goes back to five thousand years ago and has so much of it's so rich it's so deep it's so soul stirring it has so much to offer the children today how much of a are the teachers really taking out of that they are just doing one or two movie songs for their prayers Yes, I, I don't know why I can't understand that. I just, yeah, I mean, go somewhere. Wrong. Yeah, and somewhere I think um, schools need to start looking at music more seriously. What would be your idea on how schools can reorient their music curriculum? What do you think? How do you think schools can go about it? So you know, uh, from nursery. Uh, Everywhere, uh, the study, studies, you, you start teaching by teaching in music. You know, like, uh, there's no child on this earth who has not learned ABC to a song. 
Everybody has learned it from after whether you live in Germany or you live in South India or wherever you are, you learn it like that. Yes, so and it's on that level, sure. We're talking about counting numbers, there are songs for numbers, there are songs for rain. So that goes up to the kindergarten level, up to class one, maybe class two. That you are teaching to music, after that it actually stops because uh, they, they give much more priority because the subjects are more, there's math, there's social studies. This gradually takes a back seat and that's it. But definitely the first few years, uh, the schools do, do teach uh, to music yeah. and, uh, and then it just teaches out. Yeah, so I mean, I still remember that uh, song that you used to always have children singing, One Mat Kato Re Bhaiya, One Mat Kato. Yes. You know, like through songs, through music, there are so many pertinent issues of society that we can bring forth. There are so many cultural aspects that we can actually help children learn. And I think science can also be taught through music. Maths can be taught through music. What do you think, Rupi? I mean, how can, how do you think music can find its integration? Maybe KG, kindergarten, class one, class two, they do uh, teach uh, a lot of songs, which is when learn different concepts in music. And after that, I feel if you do classical music, Indian classical music is very structured. And if you introduce that, develop a curriculum, it doesn't have to be just the singing, it could be a sitar, it could be even a drums, it could be... So when you're doing an instrument or a singing or a, particularly a classical music, it is very, very dependent on your uh, rhythms, your, your drum beats, your tabla beats, which is completely mathematically... Uh, it's completely yeah. maths. So whenever you're singing, you're singing in a 16-beat cycle, you're singing in a... 10 weeks I can and uh, before I go further I'd like to tell you it's just not music even if you're learning a classical dance it's completely dependent on the Tao system which develops your mathematical skills to an extent and you don't realize that you're developing those uh, mathematics it's all subconsciously you know while you're dancing you know that you've got your 10 beats you've got two beats left you have to reach here by so many beats it's all beats and rhythms and beats and rhythms so it's in classical dance forms, it's in uh, in vocal music, it, it, it is in instrumental music. How many students or uh, schools are teaching sitar? Yeah, absolutely. Because our in instrument which made uh, classical music famous across the world. How many children are doing it? Yeah. They're not. They're not. Because the students, the schools are not, uh, they, they don't want to um, give it the priority that they need to give it. So as far as that, I feel at least from class four, the, curri the curriculum should start in which you have a certain amount of, uh, you know, you, you talk about the history of, of music, in that the prayer comes, in that the spirit, spirituality comes, you learn about your culture, you learn about uh, Mahabharata, you learn stories, you, you have even Gurbani is set in uh, 31 Ragas. Yeah. So that also can be a part of it, yeah. The rag, so you, you can learn a rag from Gurbani. If you have something like that, and of course Karnataka uh, in the in the south too, they have a, their own systems in both north and south. If you carry on as it goes and make it more, but definitely use it as a subject. Uh, if you use it as a subject in which there is an examination at the end of the year, you bet. The children will not leave it. They, it will not get second uh, second place in the curriculum of the school. And as you grow older, definitely uh, the CBSC board, ICSC board has included uh, music and dance as a third subject. The very few schools have uh, taken it up. And then definitely do it up to class 12. Well, why not? Yes. Why not? And I think somewhere, um, uh, as other subjects go, even with music, I mean, if you started with kids right from the beginning they sort of form a foundation and then it's like it just keeps growing instead of just suddenly maybe like in the eighth standard or ninth standard you take it up as a subject but you've already lost those initial years where you could nourish that uh, that spark for music or their love for music or even appreciation for music today children don't know how to appreciate classical music so again, I'm saying as it starts from, you know, like in the garden up to class of these four and 
five, six, seven, eight, you can do the initial class, classical music. Then, as you go to older classes, it gets more serious. In the ninth and the tenth, you learn the theoretical part. It where you learn how to perform. And in the eleventh and twelfth is when you go into the depth. Of it. Yes, you go into the depth. Of it. And music is such a joy. Music is such a joy. You can, you know, any time. Uh, in fact, I'm telling you, some of the students who are studying in elite school who've taken up classical music are very proud of the fact that they understand the rag. They are going for a concert and they understand what is what the tabla is. They can give a beat. They are proud of that fact. And I've, I wish pride would kind of, you know, spread to for all the children of our country. Yeah. Be proud of our music. Absolutely, and I think music can also help build culturally cultural appreciation as far as children go. Because now that United Nations have come up with their sustainable development goals, somewhere culture appreciation is so important. And I think music can be music and dance can be a fantastic way of making children children culturally aware and respect and appreciate diversity in culture. What do you think, Ruth? Yes, yes. So, uh, on a personal front, I had a, a beautiful experience when I went to Poland to take part in a festival called the Great Festival, where they invite people from different parts of the world who are not very well known and whose art form is also not, uh, you know, a prominent art form like a rock band or a jazz band. So they brought brought in artists who were slightly uh, from a backward area. And uh, I think almost uh, 25, 50 countries, but again places that you've not even heard of. And they got those that kind of music and that kind of dance onto a stage and put them all together. And they had a program called Great Kids, in which small children from about 16 countries got together and they uh, performed their uh, art form of their own country, exchanged art from from the other countries, and then performed together on the final day. Wow. You know, the elite people get a chance to do this. They go for round square, if I'm not mistaken, these conferences are across the world. But those are from elite schools. They spend money and go. But here, the festival people picked up children from uh, not very good uh, back, uh, financially secure backgrounds. They picked up children from the earth, <laughs> you know, the earthy backgrounds. And there were, I think, 160 children. So they all exchanged and they and they met and they couldn't speak each other's languages, but they expressed themselves through music and through dance. So beautiful. So it, was, it was a goosebumpy experience, honestly. Yes, yes, I mean so beautiful because this is what can bring out the one world concept so beautifully, floor within. And I think music can be a very beautiful um way to connect with their inner self. Do you think children yes. Really connect with their inner self when they are involved with music. I'll tell you something very interesting. Uh, this ex- I experienced it uh, at Wellam. A lot of parents uh, at present, um, once the lockdown started, told me um, we want to continue because we need our children to be happy and be stressed because we can't keep them in television and television all the time and not once, several of them use this word of your, what you just said, de stress. They said yeah. need, the children need it and it's de-stressing and it gives them a lot of joy. Music will never be the child. You know, that the, the child will grow up and become a mother, become a grandmother but those songs will never leave and she will be able to, she or he will be able to give uh, joy to everyone around them. There will be fun and laughter and joy uh, yeah. because music particularly is something that can never leave you. Why yeah. not? Why not use it, you know, and give it much more importance than it deserves. Yes. There's enough of sorrow around us. So let's, let's give top priority to music. Yes, absolutely, Rupi. And I think um, uh, music increases intelligence in children. We've seen Albert Einstein, we've seen Newton, we've seen how all these people used to, you know, kind of use music to de-stress, to get ideas, to, you know, enhance their creative um, instincts. So why why deprive our children of giving a tool that can actually... Concentrate because when you are singing, subconsciously you are 
uh, learning something con- uh, constantly. You're thinking about the notes you're going to sing. You're thinking about the rhythm, the beat. So it develops your uh, concentration hugely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much, Rupi, for such beautiful insights. And um, I hope. we'll all make a difference and we'll build a uh, a uh, uh, education and education system which is more holistic for children thank you so Please, much uh, let me know what i can do i'll be sure. because it's a very important part of my life <laughs> yes a very important thank part so of much. my life too so that is why i'm trying to build these perspectives so that we are just looking at our education system in a more holistic manner so that we help children connect with their inner self and you know education should bring out the inside landscape the inner landscape of the child who is outer world so you from your birth to your your birthdays we are singing happy birthday or it's a wedding it's just the music which is the most important part and you know, throughout every festival is to music if it's uh, you know uh, india school of festival if it rains you want to sing the malhar if it's But uh, if it's uh, blooming, it's you want to sing basan, and that's joy. That's joy of life. And so that's inner joy. That we need to spread that. We need to make uh, children, education institutions realize the importance of that. Let them let them sing uh, bahar when when it's spring. Let them know what it's like. Yes, absolutely. I agree with you, Rupi. I think music can bring that inner joy, which. Uh, which you know uh, can really help a child grow within and you know nurture his inner world yes. so grow let then once the child is grown within and has matured and is emotionally secure and then there is no stopping the child from doing other things that the child wants to do yes absolutely so this and is the so with yourself yeah and you're so full you are you're complete you're holistic Absolutely holistic. So you're not running after anything. You're not running after something which is external because you found it internally. So thank you so much, Rupi, for being with us today. And um, more musical moments to our children. Let's just hope for that. Sure. Sure. Thank, thank you so much. पर्वत के ऊपर चंदन चम चम कर सोया पानी सूरज की चम चमा से निकला और चल दिया पानी पानी रे पानी ही पानी पानी रे पानी ही पानी नदियों में कल कल करता नहीं कहीं रुकता पानी नदियों से नहने पड़ते खेतों गाँव में पानी 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 घर घर तालाब में देखो रुक कर है रह गया पानी कुए में जाके देखो कितना गहरा है पानी 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 सागर की गहराई में लहरा के मिल गया पानी सागर की गहराई में लहरा के मिल गया पानी गर्मी में धुआं बनकर बादल ने बैठा पानी गर्मी में धुआं बनकर बादल ने बैठा पानी बादल में चलते चलते थक्कर गिरने लगा पानी बादल में चलते चलते थक्कर गिरने लगा पानी मेरे आंगन में देखो टप टप कर बरसा पानी मेरे आंगन में देखो टप टप 
घर बरसा पानी पानी रे पानी 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 रे पानी 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 रे पानी पानी 